You're listening to the Rogers Sporting Goods Podcast with Patrick Fisher, Chandler Smith, and Josh from Outdoor Limits. In this podcast, we'll touch on everything from gear to ducks to deer, turkey and fishing. From field to table, let's dive in. This is a visual podcast that contains images that some viewers may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. If you are listening on audio, this podcast is best experienced visually. Please join us on YouTube to see everything that we are referring to. Thank you for listening. Pat, explain what's going on behind us. A little frightening. Uh um, like a haunted house in here. It is like a little, it's our own little mini haunted house. We're getting in the Halloween spirit. We've got a giant spider web behind us. Multiple flying skeletons. Uh, what else am I? Oh, there's a little skeleton sitting up there on the shelf. Yeah, a little gremlin skeleton. Spider webs. Overlooking us. Spider webs, little spiders. We got our witchcraft table going on. Oh, little yeah. candles, little skeleton heads, a pumpkins. pumpkin with bats. Yeah. Looks like, like Hobby Lobby threw up in the studio. <laughs> 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 We've got uh, some cool. Pat, we tore up your, your, your leg nettings and put them on the yeah. table. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, geez. Yeah, we've got a whole little theme going on. We're getting close. It's Halloween. Hey, the good thing about Halloween, it's a good time to get out there in the stand. Yeah, it's a good deer hunting time. I mean, that's that's go time. Yeah. So when I don't the, know. When is this podcast a, drops, it's the day before Halloween. Ooh. You guys going to dress up for Halloween so this year? good luck to. Oh. Uh, I, no, I don't, I don't think know. so. No we parties? did have. We had a couple customers. This was probably, I date everything COVID related, but this was BC. (laughs) Before COVID, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, this is five, six years ago. So a couple customers, they've been coming in forever. And they did dress up for Halloween. And I think one guy was wearing a Pikachu outfit. Oh, I remember this. And he was bow hunting yeah. and shot that doe. Yeah. What? He was full Pikachu. The other guy was like in a Batman costume, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, Batman, maybe a P- the Pikachu was bright yellow, yeah. one piece, like onesie, fluffy Pikachu outfit with the, you know, the full, on the full fuzzy hat on the ears. The best. I was pulling, I'm pulling that. It had off. to have been cold. Like, well, I don't know. Depends. He's probably wearing layers under it. That's true. But he did dress up. And go out there and got himself one. Is there scientific? You know, everybody says. Pikachu's not real. Oh. <laughs> In case you were wondering. Dang it. I thought. I thought it was. Uh, what go was ahead. your question? Sorry, <laughs> scientific something. <laughs> no, the Halloween weekend. I, anyways, it's just kind of like go time. That's my favorite weekend to get out. I don't like to miss Halloween weekend for deer hunting. Mm-hmm. It had to been it had to been a social media. Uh, I can't remember the gentleman's video. name. I've seen I'm the video sure of Tommy sh- of harvesting that doe. Yeah, but it had I can't find it on YouTube. Tommy, I believe, has their number. I need to get that. Yeah, see if you can get that video. It's an awesome video. Oh my gosh! Because Hayden can like drop it in here. If we can find if it, we can find we'll it. see if we can at least get a screenshot of it dropped in here. But it was hilarious. So I don't know. I'm trying to search the old the book face and see if they. We type in Pikachu deer hunter. Yeah, Pikachu <laughs> deer hunter. <laughs> Just Google that. <laughs> Detective Pikachu. And, you know, there's all sorts of weird stuff. But yeah. I'm not seeing the thumbnail. I think is right. What, All right. what villain would make the best deer hunter? What villain? Yeah. Villain? Not not superhero? Well, no, if we're staying in the spooky. Oh, yeah. Man, I don't know. You like, Hold on. You got like Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> no sport. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mr. Freeze. Remember the old Batman movies? Mr. Freeze, he'd just be like. I apologize, but I'm terrible at some of these. But like that, this the evil black Spider Man, Venom. Is that Venom? That's Venom. what I thought yeah. it was. I don't know. It'd be, be like ooh. hanging from a tree. As an archer, is he a villain? No. Wait. There's kind a kind of Green uh, Arrow, Black Widow. No. no. Oh, Hawkeye. Venom? 
No, no, no. Hawkeye. Hawkeye. He's not a villain. So isn't there like a good and bad archer in the Marvel side? Or no, it's the DC side, right? No, well, there's there's Green Arrow for DC. He's kind of... Then, and, yeah, he, but didn't he have an arch nemesis who also shoots arrows back at him? I think so. I, I've never seen Green Arrow like the, in the show. Yeah. You know why I you think should. it's a good show. Hawkeye, in my mind, I thought he was a villain. Kind of looks like a villain. It's because he was about to take out Thor uh, when he... In, well, gets, no, there was the first Avengers movie where Loki, like, turned him evil, I guess. Okay. Dude, so Loki he was kind of one. like a villain initially, and then, but not by his own will, I yeah, guess. Yeah, Loki would be sitting in a deer stand, and the deer would <laughs> think that was Loki, and then all of a sudden, Loki's over there. Man, we well, have, can't Loki turn into different things? Mm-hmm. Like, he could just be a be a uh, deer. Yeah. He could just walk up to him and be like, he hey, could I'm a go deer. go from Elevated 2 to Subalpine in no time. <laughs> Hey, what are we uh, doing we, today? We are, going, we are going in what's on the, one direction. Well, what's on the docket? With Halloween coming up. Ooh. So, one, uh, you've probably already been doing this, but wanted to touch base on some trail camera setups, some options out there, pros, cons, benefits, mistakes people make. And then we're going to do a little something fun. Yeah. And we've all got crazy trail cam pictures that we get, and some of these – the listeners might have seen, but we're going to diagnose some like nine weird trail cam photos. Hayden, Di- diagnose the, or debunk? Debunk. It might be debunking should at the, the same uh, time. The but, Bigfoot group be watching this podcast? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. There we go. If I, you are we, listening on audio, this is definitely a podcast that you want to hop over to YouTube for. Because we'll try to explain you're what You're going to get see. to see. Oh, yeah. And he's going to, you're going to drop them in there so people can see the picture that we're talking yes. about. Yeah. 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 And um, then uh, we'll try to explain. Yeah. Maybe what's going on, what we think is going on. Yeah. Uh, is it real? Is it fake? Are, are you going to believe <laughs> Sasquatch after this? <laughs> no. Hey, did like you see that somebody saw Sk- Sasquatch off no, the train? Off the no. train? The yeah, video? you see that? You mean the yeah. guy in the ghillie suit? Yeah, the guy in the ghillie <laughs> suit that like got up and walked around? The, that was a ghillie suit? Yeah. It Dude, was, it looks so much like a Bigfoot. <laughs> I'm a believer. <laughs> he did so good until someone did zoomed you, in you see he and had like a, clarified the picture. He and had a leash and a Black Panther with him? No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he He did good, though. Like, I know we're getting off subject again, but. Gotta have like you fun. know what? This train comes by here all the time. He just, he probably camps out in the hills. <laughs> what if he was just out hunting? I don't know. Might have been hunting sheep or something. I don't know if I've ever told the story about how we wanted to do that to Houston Knox's dad. Oh, Troy Knox. Man. Houston Knox is an employee here. He's a buyer for Rogers and his dad. I think he just like I think he just thinks it's fun, but he likes to talk about Bigfoot and everything and. Bigfoot calls and all that stuff. One time we were camping trout fishing and he like midnight walks out to this like valley and just does this, whatever you call Bigfoot call. It just sounds like bloody murder screaming, but he's just, he's just a funny guy, but we were going to go up to the, his, their deer property and get a little Amazon Bigfoot suit and run around all his <laughs> trail cams <laughs> and send, have his dad go pull all the cameras and be like, Oh my God, look what I got. Yeah. yeah. I've done that with it. Not that, but, like messing with a trail cam. You done a deer you mount? take like a deer mount. Oh yeah. Like poke it around the side. <laughs> like there's a deer. Nope. That one's dead. Yeah. You take your elk full butt your, your elk shoulder mount and do that oh to somebody. I'd like, have oh to have help. Hundred <laughs> yeah, percent. Just have the nose of it and like, like yeah a five by six in front of your Missouri trail camera. Elk spotted in Liberty. <laughs> The yep. next person that draws a tag. Well, we got them here in Liberty. Yeah, I got one that keeps showing up on my trail camera. Yep. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's good stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think a lot of people out there listening, if you're if you're into the hunting side of it, has probably seen trail cameras. Most of us have probably used them by now. Um, so, really, the two main kinds, cell- cellular, which are really popular now, and then non-cellular. Um, yeah. There is some Wi-Fi ones. I'm not going to get into too much of those. Cutting back uh, system you're talking about? Well, the, no, the ones where you actually need like a router. They'd oh, be more okay. for home security. I was going to say, um, I didn't know if you were talking about the cutting back chain system. Yeah, which you, would be cellular. And, if you had the, if and you had the, non-cellular. Yeah, both. correct. 
Yeah. So they kind of combine the two, but tons of options out there. Um, well, go ahead and explain like what, I mean, if someone hasn't bought a trail camera in eight years, like me. Yeah. It's like, been a while since I have, which I'm going to get into you know, and I, why mine are lasting so long. I was but. thinking about putting a trail camera out this year on some areas that I want to hunt. I haven't mm-hmm. done it yet. I'm just going to go hunt them. People but. even use trail cameras for over their uh, duck marshes and stuff, yep. which you really get some cool video. Oh, yeah, you do. Man, they look good. So if, when you talk about cellular trail cameras, just real quick, just yeah. hit that. What, so what quickly, does that look like? um, so the first misconception when people come in, when they're looking for a cell cam, because they've heard people talking about it. Um, so it's running off of typically um so it's running off of a network 4g 5g network off a cell tower um the two most common you see at least in our area verizon at&t um and they have maps to show you which service you of camera you should get based off of where you're at um but beyond that a lot of people think it's based off of what your phone uses oh Um, yeah so so when you get a cell cam, the uh, you would download an app, which every app out there I know of is free to download, and then you purchase a plan through that camera company. So, so if you download getting, the Moultrie app, and then you go through that and yeah, purchase if you're your doing plan. Moultrie, Bushnell, Spy Point, um, Stealth Cams, you name it, yeah. they all have their own app. You download that and purchase the plan that best suits how many pictures you think you're going to get. If you want unlimited video and picture, most most of them start about ten dollars a month, um, and you pay, you know, per month. Or you can pay a lot of times for the year. Um, you can get breaks if you use more than one camera, um, yeah. but you don't need to worry about what service your phone has. Um, you're picking based off of um, your area you're hunting. Your area you're hunting. What works best on that piece of property? Yeah. So what um, I've seen too is there's Verizon and, and AT and T, but there's also like both now, mm, and they're yeah. like a USA something too. Yeah, USA Cellular. Yeah, so it's different. Like it's that. different. Yeah. But yeah, there's like there's I've seen a couple now dual sim. dual dual so you can um, pick Tacticam. Yeah, um, Bushnell. Yeah, none of them have Boost Mobile though. No, no. Cricket. <laughs> Cricket Wireless. Cricket Wireless. Yeah. Um, and so what that does is you don't have to worry about deciding which one's going to have better service. Um, it's going to choose for you. It'll go back and forth and figure out what's going to have the best signal. Yeah. So that's basically cellular in a nutshell. Um, and then you have your traditional standalone cameras that are going to use an SD card. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna, they've been around a long time. They've been around a while, but they've they've been advancing super. You yes. Know, for, when I started selling trail cameras back in. Yeah, I mean, it was still the 2000s. It was in the 1900s. But, um, you know, we were dealing with big old D batteries or, yeah, you know, those giant just, they box just cameras. Did, just didn't survive in the cold. It's like a tube TV. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were even had some, some cameras with some film that you would take out and all that good stuff. And you're talking about your uncle, right? Oh, yeah. Still has film. From Deer He Pic- just needs to go get it developed. Developed. Yeah. But then it went to, you know, C cell for like a half a year or a year. And then now we're back to double A's. And then all of a sudden now we started getting years of battery life. I remember the early Bushnells were great with battery life. Mm-hmm. Early Moultrie M80s or yeah, I that type of stuff. Those are so small. Mm-hmm. And then we started getting into like, okay, the trigger speed starting to get really fast. And we'll probably see in some of these pictures that we're going to look at issues with trigger speeds. Yep. Issues with infrared. Cause then we went from white flash yeah, everything to, was the bright white. Yeah, the deer was stunned <laughs> running yeah. into a different county after you took a picture of it. Yeah. And you then, might as well stood out there with your camera. <laughs> <just> yeah. <laughs> but then you went for infrared, which red lighting, and then we went to blackout, which was like a tinted yeah. black screen over infrared lighting. So yeah, they so couldn't see it at all. Maybe that's a good place to start. So um, let's talk about the three different uh flash types and you've touched on them a little bit Three so and there's, there's not four that i know of not that i know of um white ir infrared and then black are the three black ones yeah. that are yeah blackout so white like you talked about we just talked about that's kind of where it all started 
It's like um, a camera flash. It's just a white light. Uh, now, you will get nighttime colored photos with those. You do. So you get really awesome photos. If you're not, if you're just out there wanting good pictures, that's probably a good one for you. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's just what it is. It's just a bright white light, um, but you get the full color. So, um, but it can startle deer. I remember walking into my hunting spot in the morning. It's still dark out, and I can. This is when I had white flash cameras, and I'd see it going off <laughs> way across the field. And I'm like, "Well, there's a deer over there. There's a deer over there." But so it's like it's like the paparazzi in the deer woods. Yeah. Um, and then IR, which is probably the most popular one that people use, um, is infrared. So you get, uh, so it's a lot of red little lights. Um, so you still, the deer can still see them, a light of some kind. Um, but at night it takes black and white photos. They're still good quality photos. Mm -hmm. Um, they're just not going to be color. That's probably the one you see most people buy is infrared, um, I haven't seen it too much, but you could, if the deer is close and staring and we're talking mostly about whitetail, um, for trail camera use, mm -hmm. um, if the deer is close and they were looking at it when that went off, sometimes those red lights can look like predators eyes. Mm. Um, so it can startle them a little bit, but not too much. For um, the most part, I don't think they, I mean, I think the they notice part, it, but they don't run yeah, away. It's not terrible. Um, and then the last one is the blackout. Um, it's invisible. Um, you see this one uh, used a lot. One for uh, security security purposes at home, out on your farm. Um, you don't want someone seeing it. Uh, with blackout, you don't get as much nighttime range either um, because there's no flash uh, because it's invisible. So mm -hmm. it's not going to give you that 80 feet, 100 foot nighttime range. Um, one of the things that um, if you're using blackout, it's probably better for close pictures. Like on a trail in the timber, mm -hmm. it's, you know, up close pictures. Yeah, typically so. infrared is going to get your distance. It does, I don't know if a flash would get farther. I think infrared was usually getting the longest distance. Infrared's pretty good, yes. I've seen some of those out to 100 feet. Yeah. You get anything over 80 is great is a great nighttime range for, for um, yeah for flash yeah. or for so visibility those, those are your three flash types um josh you got any cameras out right now i do oh. do you i've got two out nice what are they uh stealth cams yeah stealth cams are they wireless yeah. or are they are they cellular or are no they, no, so no they're, they're just cheapo trail cameras you know i'm not big into the deer hunting stuff but since I'm going this year, I figured put a couple out. Might as well. And every put, every time I've meant to check them, I haven't checked them. So no, I haven't checked them since not like a bad July. Thing. Yeah. Well, you need to go check them now and put them out and see what happens the next few weeks. But yeah, yeah I think I was going to check them like last weekend of October. Yeah. And two, then, two weeks before rifle season, get the blind set up and everything. The same Kind of see what's going on. Yeah. You might check it again right before the rut, maybe see, you know, what's yeah. what's really going on. I just Are you got them in a field or in a trail or something? So I've got one in the corner of a field in kind of like a high traffic area mm -hmm. where deer are usually moving through. Uh -huh. And I think there's an old mineral site right there too. There's like a giant hole in the ground. Yeah. Like somebody Perfect. put some min mineral down. And Probably. They've just been digging at that for a while. And then one's in this little patch of trees that every time I went in there to take a look at stuff, like deer jumped out of it. So I was like, you know, I'll put one over here. The first time I put it out, it was like one of the screw into a tree kind of ones. I come back and it's like facing the ground. And I had like a thousand pictures of leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think a raccoon tried to climb the tree and pulled my camera down. Oh, nice. yeah. yeah. Well, trail cam placement is a big thing. Obviously it's the first thing you do when you're out there, you're figuring out where to put it. Yeah. And he brought up good points. One, help yourself out with opportunity. Um, so like you said, you put it, in two spots that you knew you were going to get higher traffic. Mm -hmm. um, putting it in an intersection where multiple trails come together, not just one trail yeah. off by itself. Pinch points. Put pinch points, a fence crossing where you know you're going to have a better opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and then one, like you said, in that timber spot 
you know, you could see tracks. You could, you always scared deer, so you knew that was a good spot. So. And there's like a little bedding area right next to it too, like tall grass and right. this little patch right next to the, the woods mm-hmm. and then a bean field on the other side of it. Yeah. And then the way you set it up. So there's, you know, you can strap them on the tree. You can do the screw in. Mm-hmm. You can do um, lock boxes. Lock boxes. You can do the camera stakes. If you don't have a tree, you know, you can put it on that. Um, some guys put them way up high and angle them down. Mm-hmm. Some guys put them eye level with the deer. with the deer, yeah. um, which takes some adjusting to do. Uh, but yeah, where you want to put it, you know, increase that opportunity, not just willy nilly putting them out there. Yeah. Um, now I will say this and. This is something I was reading about, um, and I've done it a couple times, but I like to bring out an extra camera. Uh, maybe you you want to bring out a couple, but put them in some spots that you're not going to check for the season, and they are spots that you don't really hunt. It could be the area you don't hunt. You just leave it for the deer. It's kind of their mm-hmm. uh, safe zone, um, and it's kind of your – camera you don't care about and so you go put it over there you let it run for the season and you know you're not going to hunt that area so you're not too worried about it but maybe for the next year you know at the end of the year at the end of the season you go pull that card or whatever check and and get some intel on a new spot yeah um one thing i'd like to know is like how do you decipher the information you get from a trail camera like i had a couple of bucks on a camera. I mean, I'm trying to find it, but it might be a lost cause. As, as you're looking for that. But um, they were like, the info they were there. It. Yeah, like the date and the time. Mm-hmm. It's like they were there, and then like six days later they were there, mm-hmm. and then Sometimes two weeks later happen. they were there. So one one thing that I've noticed using cameras for years, and I would imagine other people this has happened, maybe happened to you, Houston, you know, and them running them at their farm is just because you put a camera there. A lot of people only hunt based off of what they see on their camera. And a lot of times there's a deer I got on my camera. Perfect shot. That was perfectly broadside. Um, is, is that in velvet? Yeah. This it was in like, July. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, ten pointer. So they're in bachelor groups then. Pat? Yeah. There was two of them in there. Yeah, and they're it's cruising, right? July, typically, you're going to see multiple, which he has there a couple. Yep. So you're going to see them, the bucks pulled together. The does will be separate, um, and then they'll start yep. breaking off. And that bachelor group time, and this might be kind of what Josh is asking, they have kind of this range, right? Yeah, so just because you see them one day, and then you might not see them for four, or then you see them six, or, you know, it's kind of sporadic, doesn't mean – that he's not there. That they're not around every so, other day or whatever. Yeah, a lot of times, just because you don't see a deer, the deer that Beth took, mm-hmm. her big one, we never had on trail camera, and I had eight cameras out that year on that farm. Yeah, and we never got it. So it just happened. Sometimes they just walk a different trail. Or, yeah, it's variables. I mean, a, a car can. Sp- Spook them one way, and they don't walk in front of your camera the next day. And then they might take a week off because they got scared, and so they, you know, they switch up, use another trail. So don't – it is good intel. Obviously, you know that these deer are around, but you shouldn't always rely on, well, I'm only hunting when I see a deer show up. Every six days, you know, because it's showing up every, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. If you know the deer's in that area, now you are just got to put in the time. And the interesting thing about this is – where I had this camera set up, it was mostly just pictures of these bucks. I wasn't, I had a few pictures of does, but most of them were bucks. You'll probably start seeing a mix now as you get into October. So now that things are, you'll start seeing, they're going to separate from that group. They're going to be alone. And you might not see that. You might not get another picture of that buck ever this year. He yeah. might. And that'll happen. His, his fall range mm-hmm. will be, a different area of the farm it might be across the road versus summer range so yeah. and that happens you think the deer got shot got hit no he's just living on a different part of the farm that maybe you don't one, have a camera one thing i like to do when i was really into cameras is like if we found a deer that was like we wanted to really know more about we wanted to figure out if we took a picture of him on this tree 
where can we get a picture of him down the road? Like work in the on the property, so you can see the path. Kind of figure out his what his what route his route is. is, what he's doing. Is he going to bed? Is he coming to yeah. feed? If we can catch him another time, we can start making these pinpoints and start. It's a and great if point. Can, I don't know if you can try to catch him three times, you know, and really start mm-hmm. dialing in. You can what he's where he's yeah. moving or where he's going to, and that gives you a lot of data going into the you know October bow season. How to get. Yeah, if you have the pick your best spot. If you find a pinch point, he walks through. You might it might not have been your camera spot, but you might have found out that that's where he's going. Yeah, and it takes it takes money. Obviously, these cameras, you know, good cameras cost not, some not, money. They're not ten bucks, but it is nice to have multiple cameras. Mm-hmm. Um, putting one camera out on a hundred acre farm, it's kind of hard to. It's kind of fun to see what you got, but you're not really. You're, you're not utilizing what cameras can do for you. Um, another thing about setting up, and I learned this on a trail, I used to always face him 90 degrees or parallel to the trail. So if this is the tree, the trail's running left to right here in front of my hand, it's facing no, directly. You're, you're shooting the perpendicular with the trail. So then you, oh. some, when they're walking, mm-hmm. a lot of times you're only getting one shot. It yeah, depends on your trigger speed. I put mine parallel to the trail, so it's yeah. looking down the trail at whatever's coming. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, turn it more at a 45 or down the trail, so you can get them walking into the camera in a way or way or yeah. a way. Yeah, because a lot of times when I first started, I'd do it. I'd get one picture. And and it's like their ear. And, and if you had a slow trigger speed, oh, it'd they, be like the, the rear trigger, end. The trigger speeds were, yeah, they're really fast now. But I yes. get a tail and be like, well, I don't know. Yeah. It was a tail. Back in the day, trigger speeds were a couple of seconds, three seconds or something. Yeah. And so, now they're all like sub-second. And, and it's okay to have a slower trigger speed if it's over a food plot yeah. or a mineral site. Mm-hmm. Somewhere but, where they're going to hang around. Yeah, but in the timber, a lot of times you're just looking at the traffic. Well, there's nothing to help them stay there. And so you would like a fast trigger speed is under half a second. Um, and there's a lot out there, 0.3 seconds. I'm seeing them so quick. That that and recovery time. So once it takes the first picture, how long before it Yeah, it gets ready to shoot another. Shoots another. Um, which brings me kind of to the next thing. Did I talk about trigger speed already? I guess we just A did. little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, there's variations on it, but what a lot of people don't dive into is the settings. Oh, man. I was just about to get to that. Yeah. I I think settings are so fun. So kind of go over that. But I think people get nervous, and I get it. There's all these settings, but I don't know if people use the trail camera to the best of their ability with all the features it has. Oh, man. I mean, not talking about just pictures. There's videos, too. But You do that while I have a... We have a donut. Mm. We have surprise donuts here from the Donut Fairy. Mm -hmm. Apple cider. Apple cider, which I don't... I, I just, when you say apple cider, I think of apple cider vinegar, and that just doesn't it's sound not. like a donut. It's actually really good. That's good. That's good. Anyways, tell us about features. Well, so there's like a, there's like the single shot based off of motion detection option, and I don't know the terminology every camera's using. It's been a while since I've been in a setting. I don't, you know, for all. Like the burst mode. You know, the, yeah. Like there's, the burst mode. There's burst mode, and I don't, what do, what do cameras get to now? Like, is it three? Is there is there more? Sometimes than that? you can get more than that. Five. Yeah. So there's burst modes so that helps. Like, you know, they could be moving or something. You get like a big little, trail one. Their head turns a little bit, or so you just get three shots. You know, and then there's also is it is it time lapse? Do they do they use time lapse or do they use what are the I've names of those? those. There's, I've seen time lapse. There's some time lapse where you could set them up to where like a certain window of the day on a food plot you can just have a picture take every minute no detection needed right it can just take a picture every that's a good one on five a minutes plot. yeah yeah like you do it for like the last 20 minutes of light yeah you can do it for the last food you plot. know last hour of light or something on a food plot you just have it take a picture every minute so whatever walks into that maybe the deer is 150 feet yeah you get from it. the camera your your sensor might not get it yeah you get stuff that you normally wouldn't be able to get yeah you might not and then you'll get you'll get deer walking through there and you kind of see, Hey, you know, what's moving through this area at the, you know, at, at dusk or mm-hmm. dawn or whatever, you yeah. know, there's, mm-hmm. those are great options for, for food plots and they don't require a, an actual, um, a sensor detection of, a, of an animal. Yeah, how many times are deer walking out there at 40 yards? Yeah. 
but it's not catching the motion Mm -hmm. or 50 yards. But if you did time lapse, you're still going to be able to zoom in on that picture you get. Yeah. And you're going to be able to see a lot of deer out there. Yeah. I'm going to kind of jump back a little bit, go back in the settings. But with that, certain cameras have a heat detection along with motion or just heat. If you remember that, like Bushnell was big into like uh, infrared detection, not necessarily motion. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, you wouldn't get like a thousand pictures of Johnson grass swaying back and forth in the wind, which we've all been there. I've all been there. I forgot to trim a limb and it just swung back and forth. Yeah. 2000 pictures of a. So there's that. So there's some stuff, some technology out about how it senses the, the take the picture needs to have maybe potentially heat involved with the motion or something like that. I, I don't know all the the gr- nits, and, nits and gritty or whatever I'm trying to say there. Yeah, I get it. And then um, with the, the – you said, like, it takes a picture of that deer at 40 yards, 50 yards, 60 yards. Like, a camera with good megapixel is going to allow you to zoom in and count those points. Yeah. A camera with low megapixel – you go to zoom that in on your computer or your phone, it's just going to get blurry the further that deer's out. So I would think about that when you're doing a food plot because you need to zoom in and see what you got. What was the one camera, and it confused me the first time I ever saw one, the real expensive, but they have a glass lens, so they're only two megapixel. Oh, yeah. But uh, Reconyx. Yeah. So not o- it, and that's the one instance where megapixel don't pay attention to. Because, like, a good camera now that, um, you know, you can get some that are 20, 30 megapixels. Mm-hmm. Reconyx is, like, 2 megapixels. But the problem, it, it's taking, like, the clearest picture because it's using a glass yeah. lens. It's wild. It's, yeah. Reconyx has some really clear pictures. But I think still megapixel comes into play when you're really zoom trying to in. zoom in. Yeah. Because that's how the data is transferred. Every, that that, you know, that square picture, every little piece is a pixel mm. and the more of those you have the more you can zoom in but yeah. i know reconyx has always been a very great camera yeah they're up there in price but yeah but i'd love to own about 20 of them yeah you know so there's videos on trail cameras that uh-huh. are pretty cool and i think for and i think you can set up like a time lapse video too which is kind of fun to do on food plots like the yeah. last 30 minutes of sunlight that's pretty cool you just turn it on on video and just see what the, you know, if you know there's deer there. And how long they're there. Get you a time-lapse video on a waterfowl marsh. Like when they're coming in to feed in the evening. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. So you don't get yeah uh, 8,000 pictures of the ducks swimming around. Yeah. But you get some cool That'd be really videos cool. to put together. That'd be awesome. But you can also get video off detection too. So you can do, you know, five-second video, 10-second video, whatever you want. Yeah. But you got to remember with all this. You got to store it on a card that can handle. Like once you go into videos or time lapses, mm-hmm. you got to put a card in there that can handle that. And you can check each camera that you get; it'll tell you what SD card it should take. Because some SD cards don't work in certain cameras. Yeah. What class? Are most of them now micro? No, actually. Are they all still standard? The ones we have are all standard. There's a few like the Link micros, Spy have micro Link SD cards, micro SD card, SD cards. Sometimes. Um, you can get the SD card where it has a micro in it. So you have both, but a lot Mm -hmm. of times those SD cards don't work in a standard SD card camera. So, you know, you can look at that and make sure you're getting the right SD card. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, when you're setting up the camera, one thing I forgot to say, and I think most of us have made this mistake we face it into the sunrise or the sunset. <laughs> yeah. And so for like the first few hours of the day or or in the evening, it's just blowing out with the sun. Yeah. I get no pictures. Yeah, especially on a food plot where you don't have food, uh, tree cover. Yeah. So trying to face those, you know, you might be like, man, this is the perfect spot. You're all excited. You put it on that fence post. You put it on that tree facing a field. You go check it in a week or two or a month, and you got a thousand pictures of the sun. Yeah. Um, so that's no good either. But you know, it'd be really cool. So transferring videos over cell cameras is that a thing now? You pay more for that service to transfer, like on a, a video for cellular. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you can do like an unlimited plan. Yeah. For like 
14 bucks really? on average. And you can do and that'll videos? get you unlimited video and pictures. Really? Where where you start paying a little bit more is like um uh a lot of these cell cams have that option where you can pay to have them send you an HD picture. Yeah, yeah. It's like a really nice picture. You know, you've got a good picture or maybe it is a little grainy. Mm-hmm. Um, you want a better quality, and you can look into that, and that's kind of, that's kind of maybe the catch a little bit on cell cameras because I think the video, the pictures you're viewing on your phone from the mobile app, these cell cameras are mm-hmm. not the fullest quality that that camera actually took. Right. The f- best quality is really honestly on the card. On the card, or you can get that high res image sent to your like downloaded separately, but based on data moving around and storage space for in mm-hmm. the cloud. I think everything's kind of like a, de- a compressed version of what you're really looking at. Yeah. And for most people, that's fine. But when you, you know, if you wanted to get high res images or you want to get like full, full detail, you'd have to go to the card or yeah. get a download of high res. Well, what were you saying? When was the last time you checked your camera? <clears throat> was it July, right? July. Okay. Perfect. So another thing that, and I did this too. So I get so giddy with trail cameras because it's so fun. Sometimes I have as much fun looking at pictures than I do actually the hunt itself. And so I would check them every week. Yep, weekly. Um, It's probably not the best practice unless your camera is right at your stand so you can grab it on the way. But checking cameras too often um, is probably not the best practice. It's better to leave it out there a while. Um, Obviously, when you're going in to check your camera, if you have the opportunity, try to spray down, not leave set, go in in there. You're making noise anytime you go in there. So especially during the season, it's better actually just to let them sit a little bit um, or put them in an area that you can check where you have to go through anyways to hunt. Um, anyways, that's one That's one thing that people do. Sometimes, and I did it when I first started putting out cameras. Yeah. I'd check them as many times as I could because it was so fun um, to check the camera. Yeah, when we were doing cameras and all that stuff, the little hunting show, we would check them weekly, you know. And it, I don't think we heard anything with it. We were pretty careful in what we did, but. Well, now you, you know, don't have to with the cell cams. Yeah, you know, the cell cams yeah. is a great option. Yeah. But at, at the same time I say that, we didn't actually shoot a deer right next to a camera. It was, you know couple hundred yards one direction oh, that we had yeah. to move a set to go to go chase you know right you know does that does that mean something you know that they weren't yeah the the shooter buck wasn't moving in front of where we wanted him to move in front of That's when true. we were actually sitting out there yeah you know, i don't know um but like say i was gonna say in sale cameras too now you can go like security box solar panel battery pack on a tree walk away yeah, you could leave it there all season, never have to go back to it once. Yep. Never have to put a scent out there. Solar panel, battery box. Or like, how far away do you live from your camera? Mm, probably an hour and a half. Yeah. So, but that's kind of nice because it's a cell cam, right? No. No, it's not. So getting That's a cell why I haven't cam. checked it. <laughs> well, it's probably. I've been waiting for all the fields to get harvested so I can get in there easier. Oh, yeah. But the cell cams, you see a lot of these guys now that live, you know, they live three and a half hours away from their farm on the other side of the state. Mm-hmm. And they're just getting pictures. They don't have to worry about it. Heck, All the you gas. Could, and You can live, you know, 18 hours from your hunting property. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's some people that have some leases in the state that live in Florida that come into the yeah. store. And they just got their cell cam, you know. Yes. So they're just, you know, sitting on the beach checking their white tails walking by their hang-ons yeah um a couple other pointers is always make sure you have uh multiple sd cards i like to have two sd cards for every camera yep at least um, there's nothing worse than walking out there pulling your sd card because you're going to leave your camera because mm-hmm. you want to check your sd card you got to take it home um or check in the stand or whatever and you don't have the another sd card to put in there Hot tip number two. So then your camera's sitting there doing nothing. I got a, I got a tip for you too. Buy a small tackle tray for a tackle box when you do this, or an SD card holder. Yeah, they make legit ones. But when you I've go out one. there, you have one. I think it's in my backpack. Okay, grab it if you want. So 
you going out there to change cameras and you're relying on putting SD cards in your pockets. <laughs> yeah. And everything, you could pull your phone out one time and the SD card falls out. Oh, perfect. Or, you know, in general, like, you don't know what card came from what camera. You could almost organize it to where you have a little tackle tray or a little car SD card holder. Heck, those are probably aren't that expensive anyways. They're a little bit nicer because they actually hold an SD and card. And it's a hard case. You don't have to worry about yeah. it. This has a spot for micros and SDs on regular. It's pretty cool. It's just like a little mini hard case. It's waterproof, too. Yeah. That's awesome. That one's got a yeah, gasket on there. They've got, cam. they've got camera backpacks. It's cam? Yeah, it's a stealth cam one. Oh, yeah. They got some camera backpacks, things you can put all your gear yeah, in. Yeah, we used, to, we used to do like, hey, put that in your pocket. And then we'd drive around the property. You know, pumpkin. You got pumpkin donut. And uh-huh. then we get back in the truck, and it's like, dump your pockets of all your SD cards. And then you're like, we're missing one. And then, you, you know, you're, you're fig- trying to figure out where cards are He's at. He's out in the middle of the cornfield. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> of course, it's the card you want to see. Like, oh, this card's got 10,000 pictures on it. And then you lose it. Jeez. Um, Been there. Another thing I do, you know, so let's talk about the care of the camera. Okay. And so. How to keep ants out of them? Well, yeah. Things to help you prolong your camera life. So I'm running. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that donut got in the way. <laughs> Brain ain't going to make fun of me for that. Um, is I'm running some older Moultrie M550s. Ooh, we 550s. ran a sale on them. I got these things like eight, 35 bucks? eight years ago for like. 35 40 bucks yeah bought like eight of them i still have them all to this day yeah. eight years later they're all still working good condition but i take care of them excuse me um so one of the things i do is when i do check them um i make sure that um you know i'll open it up check the lens, wipe it down, make sure there's no bugs or anything getting in there. You see mm-hmm. that a lot. Um, and there's some tricks. You can look online. There's some tricks to help keep some of the different bugs away. Yeah. And um, cameras have got better and better from. Yeah, like the sealing of them. Seal it and, you know, they don't crawl up through the charging port and all that, whatever, you mm-hmm. know, that type of stuff. Another thing I do is I at least give the cameras an opportunity to breathe. And you know, what I mean by that is. When I'm done hunting for the year, there's kind of a dead period yeah. for me. So I take all my cameras down. I take them home, take the battery trays out, take all the batteries out, and I let everything lay there. It kind of dries out. Mm-hmm. You know, the springs and everything in there on the battery tray, everything kind of can relax. Um, and I do new batteries every year Yeah, um, for me. You don't have to, but I, I don't take the chance because I've done it before. And were 550s uh, double A's? They're double A's. Yeah. And I run lithium only. Um, you don't have to do that. Lithiums do help when it gets below freezing. Um, I've ran alkaline before, and sometimes it'll get too cold, and then it won't draw enough power, and the camera will shut down. Um, but with lithium, I've never had to worry about the temperature. So I just run lithium from the get-go, and I don't have to change them at all, all year long. Yeah. Um, but I'll put new ones in. It does cost me a pretty penny getting, uh, lithium for eight cameras, but like 96 batteries. I've also, I've also, that doesn't hurt as bad as going out and checking a hot trail camera that it said it had battery life, but I didn't put new batteries in it and it died the day after I left. And so it sat out there for two weeks getting nothing. Um, that hurts just as bad. So I do new batteries, you know, clean them out, blow them off and do all that. So just little things. You can make these cameras last a long time. Yeah. Geez, Pat, did we cover it all? We kind of, there's a lot, you know, check more of it. Um, a lot of the infos on the, on the cameras we use online, look into them, but there's also some software out there too, that helps with, even with the camera and uh-huh. stuff that, that can like the Moultrie software we talked about in like episode 62 or something like that. Yeah. I was going to say, if you guys are interested in listening to more about Moultrie, Moultrie specific trail cams, yeah. we did a podcast yeah. with them. Episode 63. Nice. Yeah, 63. Sat down with Ryan Rip and Frank Flack. From yeah, awesome. So, yeah. It's a great cell cam out there, but they have options now to like, you only see deer. You only see bucks. Yeah. You can target it, what you don't see the possum or the raccoon that walks by. Like you don't have to, f- filter through the 5,000 you're going to say i want to see 
antler deer. Yep. Push Boom, the there it is. No more does, just antler deers. And then I think with that, too, I there's other ducks. Yes, it does work <laughs> as well. There's other things out there that help score potentially by the picture to help mm. give you scoring rough estimates kind of give you yeah. an idea of what you're looking at all sorts of technology and oh, there's, so, there's a rabbit hole and there's forums and everything to figure out but i would say if you use them correctly i think it's a good tool yeah um and it's just a cool thing to have to get awesome pictures um including some crazy pictures which we're going to dive into but before we dive into that we have a giveaway oh don't forget the giveaway yeah week three yep, of our 12 three. weeks of, kind of christmas giveaway what was our last podcast about duck hunting right and we did a deer hunting video yeah, we're and now we're doing trail camera switching deer it hunting up on you uh, yeah so podcast and now we have a duck hunting giveaway pay attention people so week three of our 12 weeks of christmas giveaway josh what is the first item um, we're going to be throwing out we probably you guys keep giving away heavy things <laughs> okay i'll hold it and you tell them what it is. Oh, he's gonna miss the mic. Got it. So what's what's it called? The quick koi? Yeah, it's yeah, quick koi is decoy it's motorized a, system. It's a uh motion system for your decoy spread. Yeah. It's it? electronical and uh it holds five decoys on there. The battery box is the weight. You just flip it on and you know, five run. five Thing decoys will start sweet. swimming around in the water. Yeah, I was well, gonna can, say they swim around down now, but Pat. So yeah, quick shoulder toys. press. <laughs> when you're, if you're listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, the previous week we should have had a um, video go out talking about it, seeing it in the water, and all that cool stuff. Pretty sweet deal there. So like Thanks he said, awesome. five decoys, one in the center, four around the corners, mm-hmm. right? Because it's a spreader, but it's also right. got. Uh, you know, it's also got a propeller of some sort yeah. to move it around. Moves them around. It looks it's, very natural. And it's tethered to the battery box, which is the weight. So it doesn't, it kind of bounces around and doesn't go everywhere. Pretty sweet thing to bring out. What and else de- are we giving away? Decently packable. Yeah. Have well, we you decided? Can't use it. You can't use it without duck can't decoys. Can't use it without duck decoys. So we're so going to give away a six pack. Six pack of final approach decoys? HD Mallards. Yep. So. Good size decoy, good size mallard decoys, and the six pack will go right on top of that that um, quick coys spreader motion deal, and it work just fine. Set up and ready. That could be your whole spread. Think and about it. Every one of your decoys is awesome moving. Awesome looking in a spread. That'd be awesome. That thing yeah, is pretty sweet. Get, win one and then buy another. Yeah, put four in your spread, and that's all you use. Um, Definitely could be. But with how heavy that is, I I'd, I wouldn't want to walk with that. That'd be in. a good. So, uh, we got to come so up with a secret code. I appreciate appreciate the giveaway from Quick Quick Coy, Decoy, and Final Approach for throwing in some decoys to yeah, add that, to that. That's like a f- almost You're about five hundred. Yeah, yeah. Six pack of decoys and that thing. That's yeah. pretty sweet. Um, code word um, Halloween. Halloween. Can you yeah. spell that? H a l l o w. N E E N. What? what? <laughs> nope, there's no in there. You there's, mispronounced you got two it. Ends. Halloween. 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 Yep, yep. Yep. Put me on the spot. You get it. That's, that's, we'll, you we'll had keep it right it that until the first in. Play the sound effect. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So Halloween is the code word because it's our little Halloween episode. So if you're listening, um, You'll use that code to get extra free entries into that drawing. The Quick Koi Decoy Motion Spreader and some Final Approach 6-Pack HD Mallards. And then also Pretty we sweet. added in there you can do a refer a friend, which Ooh. gets you bonus points. So you can send it to your buddies. Got to refer a friend. Hey, yep. you want your hunting buddy to win this. If you don't. Yeah, you might as well. Yeah. You and all your hunting buddies get together so someone can get it. And we get to see, like, how the winner is chosen. Like, you um, the winner will be chosen and it'll be like, it was, he was picked off of his refer a friend entry or something, something like that. And that's you can see, cool. or he was picked off of his TikTok view entry. Oh, that's great. So we can see, you know, it's random, but you know, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Anyways. So all right, now so, for the main event, I know you guys sat here and listen, listen to us talk about yeah trail cameras for an now hour that, now that you're all going to be getting trail cameras let's talk about what you might see on trail cameras so 
lot of pictures floating around out there. We've got nine creepy images we're going to dissect that were found on trail cams. Um, I'll kind of talk about them a little bit. And Josh, me and Chandler are going to, we're going to play a uh, scientist and see if we can figure out what it is, fake, what's real, what's happening. So with that, give me some spooky tunes. Ooh. So picture number one. And, and this comes from subreddit r slash ghosts, and it was posted in 2021. Um, and for anybody listening, if you head over to the video portion of this, um, the picture of this will be put up on the video so you can see what we're looking. And I got to read. <laughs> so this was from a relative's trail camera. I'm not going to assume anything. Thoughts. So, into that. looks like we're in the timber here. What appears to be three, three people. Three people wearing like white, their nightgowns. Yeah. White <laughs> nightgowns. Maybe. And it is kind of black and white, so it could be nighttime. Maybe they're, uh, it's at a family's place or they're on a camping trip. Maybe they're playing uh, tag and they're in their nightgowns. Or they're do you, doing do you see a, footwear? Do you see footwear? It does look like dark on the bottom of the foot. And that looks but like shoes too. Those look like shoes. Those don't look like shoes though. Um or they're doing a white tail ritual. <laughs> and look up look and up praying the trees for deer. Up, up top. Do you feel like if this wasn't black and white, if there would be light coming through the trees? Like if this was a black and white converted picture? Hmm. Of course I'm you know. I'm a skeptic on everything. It all could be altered and placed and AI yeah. generated, but right. not in 21. 2021. We didn't have all the Actually, AI it might know. be a black and white daytime photo because I'm there's too much ghosts. light up here. Not ghosts. So maybe they're well, just. Well, yeah, I think I'm going not ghosts, but I'm trying to figure out. Maybe the friends had a sleepover and they're like, we got to get out of here. And they're sneaking out of the house. And they happen to run by. The trail cam and got 2021, caught. who wears nightgowns like that? I don't know. I think These the people creepy do. part of this is the fact that like, just thinking about the position of where they're at, deep person in the woods, looks like they're in the zombie walking. They're I think this is an edge of a field. Yeah. Like that's the corner. But that'd be a weird place for a camera too, looking that way. Yeah, That's yeah. not my farm, is it? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it is odd. No, I mean, I feel, like, odd. I feel like there is a house or some type of place yeah. behind the fourth wall behind the camera. Maybe that's their camo is is nightgowns. Or they could be witches. Or they could be witches. <laughs> Little witches brew. Well, that's our first one. It's not that scary. Let's so zoom into that. that the hundred percent. It's like, oh, that's not like weird shape bark, and it looks like a ghost. No, it's like there's people in this picture. Yeah, there's a leg. There's yeah. a foot. There's a hand. There's yeah. zombie walking arms. Huh? It does look like it barefoot walk, walking away, kind of. But that looks more like shoes. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully, we'll find out more about it down the road. We haven't found out anything. Um, any of these photos? If there's an answer to it. It's on. It'll be the on screen. there. Okay, so no so, answer listed yet yeah, for we this. We still have no idea what this All is. All right. Well, yeah, give well. us give us your thoughts if you're listening. Yeah. So, picture number two. So we all just kind of think that it's some type of weird incident. Sound effect. Oh, <laughs> there it is. There you go. Okay, this is from the same subreddit. This was posted also in 2021. My it's always an uncle or grandparent has these yeah, pictures. Right. <laughs> my uncle has a trail cam at my old grandparents' house. Throws up red flags every time. <laughs> which are both passed away and the house is abandoned. The camera takes three picks every time a motion is set. So they got three round bursts on. Oh, man, they got three round bursts. This Definitely thing, an infrared camera. Only, probably a blackout. This thing only appears in one out of the three photos. That's odd. And... Doesn't seem to me. Too this doesn't to seem too odd. I think this is the uncle, <laughs> and he happens to be in shorts and a t-shirt. Well, if it's the uncle, then that's not a good thing because the uncle is no longer here. Oh, no. 
Well, they said his grandpa was no longer here. No, the no, grandparents. My bad. Yeah, have it's, passed away. It is the the uncle yeah, the owns the train ca- the trail yes. camera. Yeah, and he put a the uncle put a trail cam at the grandparents' house who are both passed away. I'd be interested to know on which of the burst, the three round burst, which one was he? Was he in the middle? Yeah. So they was said it it's be- only on one of three. Just because you have it on burst mode what doesn't that? mean that you will get. Like sometimes, here's the problem. By the time it detects the motion, we talked about that trigger speed. Yeah. Doesn't mean you'll get three pictures of what's walking by. Yeah. Okay. So, and then how cameras work to a little bit. Whenever that trigger speed is de- detected and it's going to take a picture, the picture doesn't happen um, in like a split moment. That camera has got to like open up and absorb all this information falcon. to take that picture. And in that process, what I what I imagine is this guy placed a camera, turned it on, and wanted to see if it was going to work. And then all of a sudden, the red light turns on, and he says, working, and he walks away. In that process, that red light turns on, the camera is starting to take a picture. He leaves the frame, and the camera only gets like the ghost effect of his image as he leaves the frame. Has anybody like said speed. what they thought it might be? People, I mean, obviously you've got the ones that are like, that's a ghost or you okay. know, your dead grandparent. But the what people have said is kind of the same thing as what Chandler said, that it's probably the person who set up the camera mm-hmm. and walked by it and then just didn't realize that it was taking yeah. a photo. I think um, they just got done setting it up and the shutter speed was so slow and they're they, taking, they got out of the shot. Before they're taking it. a picture off the picture of a viewer. Right. You can yeah. tell by that. That looks like a child on his shoulder, though. I think he's got like a pet. I think he's got like a pet bobcat on his shoulder. Yeah, (laughs) and his arms are weird, and he's missing a leg. Yeah, because the shoulder looks a little. His right side, our left, looks higher than. Unless there's like a hoodie thrown over his shoulder. shoulder. What are all these lines? That's from the computer. I think they're taking it on the living room, reflecting off. But I'm kind of going with what you're talking about. Is what I think it is. So good on that one. No, all right. one, it's probably one the worst thing. thing to give it to all of us. None of us believe in ghosts. Well, yeah. That's but, okay. <laughs> we're debunking it. We're yeah. mythbusters. For a camera that's taking a night photo, uh-huh. like you guys said, what would what camera would it be that's not giving you like a, bla- a pure black and white photo that shows the background? What do you mean? That's what I noticed with this one that it's was kind of odd. Is it's that a there's nothing behind him. Yeah, it's a blackout camera. So... And you I don't mean know because you can't see anything behind him, right? It's well, that, just on. It just it looks like an old camera that didn't have a very good flash yeah. range. Gotcha. I think so this could be an old, old, old camera. blackout. Yeah, mm-hmm. old infrared, old blackout. The old blackouts at the beginning, they didn't have you couldn't you don't see a hundred feet. You really don't see a hundred feet on a blackout. It anyways. might be like thirty feet. That's all you get. Which is, not and if very this far. is taken over a hill and the ground goes away, you're just gonna get black. Like, this could be going downhill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you wouldn't see anything. Right. Or it's just like a cut soybean field. With right. There nothing, be there. nothing there. It only yeah. gets about, yeah. Next. All right. Picture three. Ooh, I no. Like I like these. So, this one comes from the subreddit r slash trail cam posted in 2022. This was taken at a hunting camp I used to go to. And I guess they, they don't go, go there anymore. no more. <laughs> I still have access to the photos taken by the trail cameras on an app. What could this what, be? What app did he use? Spy Point okay. down here. And this is on November 22nd, 2.24 in the morning, 43 degrees. This was a Spy Point yeah, was flex. was southern picture, 43 degrees on November 22nd. Yeah, that's not too. I mean, it's in the middle the of the night. The trees are tall and skinny. And where at, though? Yeah. Little pot, little Georgia. I think what we're supposed to look at is the little white thing in the yeah. background there. I was wanting to see what feeder that was. Nice feeder. <laughs> um, so, depending on pixels, one, it could be a deer. Yeah, I could see that. Off, you know, and you're looking just like at facing just the solo. Yeah, head on or facing away. Yeah, and it could just be pixelated and hard to tell. Mm-hmm. Um. Man. Could be a ghost. I think it's a fly. It could be something on the screen, yeah. And it or like one of those, like you know what, uh, one of those. It could uh, be a bug. It's on a the bug lens. on the on the lens. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that 
It would be a good so one. this one we do kind of have a half answer for. Nobody's fully been able to give a, an actual debunking for it, but they yeah, like said that it is either one of the two options that you guys said. It's either a front-facing deer that is in the back, or it is a bug Boom. that is on the screen. Yeah, that could be because the bugs look giant when they're on a screen. Yeah, just yeah. call it Scooby Doo. That was easy. All right, <laughs> it's old next, man wins. Next picture. <laughs> Oh, this oh what well, is my nephew? <laughs> he got lost. The uh, unknown 2009. origin, 2009. This image has been titled Zombie Boy. Okay, so 2009, this image might with, be with a security camera. Okay, not a trail first camera. off, due to the child's wide eyes, that's because this is a white flash uh, camera. And yeah, 2009. Posture. Yeah, this could be a, an old school. Screw it, screw it. If it was a white flash, he'd have color. It is still unknown who is in the image or if the image... Well, I said white flash because you definitely got... Well, it looks definitely infrared. A white flash would have okay. picked up more. Well, you would still get... Is that a building right there? Yeah. yeah. Building there. I think he was out checking the chicken coop. Um, I don't know if he's stumbling. He just happened to be in a weird pose when he walked. Looks like a normal kid to me. It's like he knows that's the trail cameras there. He looks at it. But sometimes you get the white eyes. His gym shorts Uh, look current for 2009, I tell you that. Yeah. (laughs) Got some and ones. Yeah, 100%. When did... I don't know uh, why they get Zombie Boy out of it. When did posture? When did that one show... When was it super popular? The Walking Walking Dead? Walking Dead around... Well, more like 2012, 2013. Oh, it didn't come out. I don't no, know the original. I was in high school. Stayed. When did it come out? Know. Somebody, you know, yeah. was like, oh, zombie boy. That looks just, I think it's just the kid, kid that kid lives there. Yard. What's, what's yeah. creepy about this one is that it is one of the most popular and one of the most well-known trail cam creepy really? image photos. It's not but that creepy. nobody has ever come forward to say who this is or where the origin mm. of it came from. So there's, there's nothing about it that we know of other than right. just what people that have said. That is online. odd. Yeah. Well, think about okay. Think about 2009. I like, think the images could be trying real. To, I'm trying to figure out what's going on in this time period. You ba- you basically have Facebook, no Instagram, right? Or maybe uh, early Instagram. Early. This, is, this was like Farmville Facebook. This was yeah. uh, 2009. I Obama mean, just became president. Yeah, but yeah, you're you're like I'm just saying like viralness and stuff we deal with now doesn't mm-hmm. happen in 2009. Right. No. right. I and mean, you had YouTube a little bit, but you're not going to go viral. No. I mean, this one did, like, but you're it? not going to go viral off of posting an image. When was YouTube like the first time like it really went big? Like 2007? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, YouTube was like, yeah, it was the early days too. Yeah. As far as being I like, think that was pre-Google owning it. I think no. that was before Google bought YouTube. But I could just see like, you know, someone not knowing if the picture was taken and never came forward. Because right, that's what little I'm Johnny thinking. was out there looking for his dog. And you see that kid next year; he's going to look completely different. He's going to be a foot taller and have a beard. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I think. I think we're on the. It's kind of weird. Two thousand nine. Like, did they have infrared cameras in two thousand nine? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, that's that's I'm trying to date the cameras. Like, in two thousand nine, yeah, there was trail cameras. I had the well, old trail cameras, but oh, okay. the infrared or the white flash in two thousand nine. Like I was think Reconyx it, out that's in 2009? That's why I thought it was white flash. It's glowing. I mean, Well, white flash would have gave him color, unless they made it black and white. White flash, he would have had yellow, like, you know, ivory skin. I you got would see you. the green tree leaves. On his. Yeah. Okay. You know, and if his shorts were not silver gray, they could have been. He's wearing them and one shorts. Yeah, 100%. And dude. one mixtape right there. Yeah. He lost his basketball. I'm just trying to think. The when was the right first infrared? <laughs> yeah, when was the first infrared camera released? It might have been right around then. Yeah, honestly. early early days, or maybe yeah. this is secure. But security cameras probably had infrared yeah. way more, way, way before deer hunting trail cameras were out. For sure, it don't matter. It looks like an infrared picture. Yeah, you Normal can see the kid. flash range not very far at all because the you know we didn't have. And this is someone's there. yard. It's like yeah. a security. That dude, his basketball went over the fence. Into the he was playing the, in the driveway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He went down to the bottom of the hill. And, and some, he came back with nothing. The, na- <laughs> <laughs> the neighbor's backyard was real creepy, and they had a light flash or something. And, right. Know. Yeah. Well, maybe that's the light. It was a motion light. Yeah. Could be the motion light. And then that's. Oh, yeah. 
it definitely kind of looks like that. You could have a barn motion light shining yeah. down, and it's like an infrared camera or something. Yeah. All right. All kid, right. Kid was just Next. playing basketball. Yep. <laughs> Next picture. That's All a nice right. deer. Is that a kid riding a deer? This is so, Unknown, so photoshopped. This is. Unknown <laughs> origin, 2014. Uh, of course it's unknown origin. Not much information about this image. Several theories claim that it is a staged photo. You think? <laughs> you think? That's a shoulder mount from a wall. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Look at the neck. But even now in 2023, nobody has come forward to claim the... Well, yeah. No one's... No it's one claims prank. counterfeit pictures. Yeah. So one... You're not standing there. It is photoshopped. Um, but those, all of it, all three deer, items. Yeah, it's actually like three different. I love the drop shadow. Yeah, there's a drop shadow. I love the on drop that. shadow on the deer in the front. <laughs> Oops. Oh, go back. Oh God. You gotta swipe to go yeah. back. Woo. Well, we we got it. Almost ruined it. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a drop. If anybody knows what Photoshop things are, like there's a drop shadow behind the deer in the foreground, which is hilarious. And then zoom dead in. giveaway. Yeah, zoom into like the the child and the the deer, <laughs> like the does. Like, hey, what are you doing here? Kids, like, I don't know, just want to have fun. Yeah, that that was probably her Christmas morning, and she's tired, you know. And and then dad's like, I'm gonna Photoshop that picture into my trail cam photo. It's funny. The original photo is probably just that doe. Do you see a dividing line down here anywhere? They did pretty good right here, though, with like layering that behind the sticks. Well, I'm trying yeah, to think sticks, if they, right. if, or if they, they had, took, if they, they had this picture like these on the two trail pictures, camera, and they had a picture with the, the girl lighting one. is totally different. See, that's what it is. So, like, they had a picture with the girl one night, or yeah, right. And then they had a picture with the deer, it's and right they've, here. They've combined them. Can you see the dividing line? Yeah, right there. Yeah. So there are two different pictures that were butted next to each other. To make them look like they're at the same time, and then the de- the big deer in the front is like the giveaway. You would mu- you would have had a better opportunity with the girl and the doe just by itself, without the faked taxidermy deer with the drop tine in the foreground, <laughs> 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 with a drop shadow. That's awesome. Oh gosh, good try, fake internet. Fake. This that, one no. is believed to be fake. Yes. yes. Uh, again, like I said in the one thousand percent, there's nobody that's come forward about it. There's nobody that's been able to fully debunk yeah. it. But yes, it, it is probably fake. Yes. Well, three of us said it was fake within two seconds of seeing it. <laughs> Next. No deer takes a picture like that. All right. This is from. Wait, what, what, you went too far. I don't know. Oh. What's this? It's the one from yeah, 2015. This is the one. Unknown origin 2015. This one a, might need a second look. You got a bug on the lens and what? What am I looking at here? Yeah. No information is available. I think we're looking at this. Tree, little tree, and we got another little tree, yeah. and then a tree. Yeah, I don't think that's a. Pr- I that? think it's just more trees. The trees, back. There. What are we looking at, Hayden? Do you see? So the main tree that's on the kind of the center of the yep. image, right yeah. behind that, uh-huh. is what people believe to be a girl facing backwards. So you're looking at her hair that's kind of flowing down her back. Oh no! And then her leg is like one. Her right leg is. Yeah, right off the side you're of the just tree. make you're making that yourself you're putting that up in your head i think it's just that's a tree another tree with some foliage in the ground right maybe that's a possum down there no i don't think it's an animal it would have eyes that reflect back to you now zoom in towards the bottom though because there does look to be a shoe yeah like a, a piece of wood on the ground yeah yeah just dead fall yeah no big deal Took care of that one like we're a bad saying, habit. Tree. Tree. We're saying tree. I'm just saying tree, deadfall yeah. and trees and stuff. Like the, the yeah. what they're thinking is a leg looks like a stick and it is smaller than any leg I've seen. And ever. there's no contour to the leg. It's literally just a stick. A stick. So next. Subreddit R slash How many we got of these? What uh, is there's this? Nine. We're I don't almost know which done. one we're on right now. No, this we're is from twenty twenty. My parents have a trail cam. It's motion activated. I, do. I would recommend reading this whole thing. They okay. got these four photos, which were taken during the night. We can't figure out what is in the sky in photos two, three, and four. I'm going to tell you here in just a second. <laughs> if you look at the timestamps, it shows up after midnight, then moves upward after 5 a.m. They live in a very rural area of eastern Ohio. There are no roads or houses. How about railroads? Um, I thought it might be a drone, but the lights didn't move from 3 to 4.40. 
but the lights didn't move from 3 a.m. to 4.45 a.m., and the animals aren't bothered by it. Some people guessed it could be fog lights on a truck, but this area could not be accessed by anything but a small tractor ATV. Well, <laughs> uh, my dad and uncle walked out to that area and didn't find any tire tracks or footprints. So uh, someone also happen. mentioned it could be satellites, but I don't understand how they would line up like this. Well, they didn't have – was Starlink out by then? It's not Starlink. It's pretty low. What, from what – I can't see it very close, but it's pretty low on the horizon. What's the colored well, picture that, from the same area? Yeah, yeah. So the colored picture is the next morning. The context. It's like yeah, showing you yeah, what yeah. we're looking at. I, d- I kind of split up because there's five photos total. So we got a possum in the top left, right? Yeah. The left photo is with nothing there. There's nothing off-putting about that image. Yeah, that's just to show you – that's taken awesome, a few awesome. hours before the lights start coming in. Okay. Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> next. <laughs> Okay, so hold on. This, I, I don't, this light is in all of them, the single by itself. Oh, yeah, on top of the ridge? Yeah. And there is something, like, over here, but let me... So these pictures are taken at different times. How, how close to it? it the, I put the time codes on the bottom right of the photo. It's oh, kind of 306, hard to see 444, 514. So 45 minutes and then a half hour. Yeah. Okay. Let me look at the the, the green one. I'm just thinking, like, yeah, like this stick right here. You see that stick right by that coyote? Mm-hmm. You know, what if there was something on it? Oh, and moving. it was blowing back and forth, and the shutter speed was, like, capturing all those little data points of it moving back and forth. But it looks like it's floating, right? Yeah. It definitely looks like a shutter speed issue. It's in between the trees there and this tree. Because the only place, and it's like it lines up perfectly with what looks like the top of the trees right there. Yeah, right here. Yep, exactly. But it does move through the sky, like that thing said. So it starts low and goes higher. Oh, it does does go higher on the other one. It's got to be UFO. Well, the bottom one (coughs) it goes higher. Could be Starlink twenty twenty. Was that was that flying around the? And it just Starlink's not that bright, and they're more spread out. Okay, somebody did mention Starlink in the uh, the Reddit comments. Well, and in general, these these shutter speeds at night they need to take for especially with infrared they need to take time to capture all that that data. Mm-hmm. So if anything's moving like a satellite or something, when it takes that picture, you could get multiple dots because of it, because of it's moving. And if the if especially if it's blinking, yeah, it's going up, not if that satellite's blinking right. and that shutter speed's open for a second that that. So that satellite might have blinked how many times? Six, seven, eight times in that in that shutter speed? Yeah, that would make sense if it was no. a one second exposure. Yeah. If it is a satellite though, <clears throat> the Earth spins. Right? I think that's a fact we all know. The Earth I spins. Don't know. So know. It's, it's, those it's, lights it's would shaped be moving. like this table. I thought the Earth was flat. <laughs> <laughs> the lights would be moving the to ice the left wall or the right, depending on which way. And, you know, and they're in the same exact spot on and all three photos, several hours up. apart. Yeah. I'm going back to my original answer. Aliens. Aliens. This one, I don't know what it is, honestly. That, I think, in, that's in the same spot. It's That can't be an animal either. The you, thing is perplexing like, about it. It never is moved time. at all, that little, the white speck. I feel like the first two right there are the same image. Uh, that animal's running to the left. These are oh. going to the right. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a pack of coyotes, and then they jumped in the last image. <laughs> Their eyeballs reflecting. It did get warmer by two degrees. Spartan. But I don't know, you know, I'm not saying it's the same satellite or something, but I just don't know if like, they're on the same orbital thing, and, you know, I don't know. So it go, cl- goes around the Earth in 30 minutes? It's not the same one. It's a different one, but they're on like the same. The same At first, I line? thought that was. Yeah, like, I don't know. Are they by an the airport? Windows. That's what I. Ooh. I don't know. I mean, it's one of those like light towers in the background. Possibly. Yeah. But why would there the be so towers? many? Well, because they're blinking. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be hard to see what's behind this. But like, if it's an Way airplane coming there. through, going left to uh, right, I don't know about an airplane. Yeah. Down. I don't know about an airplane. Leaving at the red it's eye. Three hours or yeah, two hours. What? That an airplane's in the same spot? 
No, it's not the same spot. It's a different it's plane. It's catching a different yeah. plane. You got you got same flight paths. They're, I mean, they're, they're today so the they're wind's out of the airport. Okay, think, I see what yeah. you're saying. So like planes oh, are coming yeah. in to land or taking off because yeah. they're taking the same. But the time of day doesn't quite make. I mean, there's, there's some late flights, some red eye yeah. stuff going on. I thought sure. it was a railroad, but, but they also said I it was in a oh, very no, no, rural no, no, no. part. No, this is what they said. So if you read back, it can't be it can't be a flight. It says uh, the lights didn't move from 3 a.m. to 4:45. That's, well, that's not like true. They said, it looks like the same image, but the lights stayed in the same spot. But you see that the possums or whatever moved. The the, the last image, the lights did move mm-hmm. slightly, slightly. Yeah. Which I'm assuming that there's more photos that have been taken in between this time. I mean, that's what I would assume. Too. Right. That, I'm assuming so that there's more photos that they in don't, between there that don't have it at all. Yeah. Well, they're saying that they didn't move. What I'm saying is, like, if they are saying that it didn't move, they have the data in between 3 a.m. and 4.45 through other photos to show that it was still there. No, I, I assume that there's nothing there at all. But in those, Or if they would have put them on there. Or I think it Unless they would have specified they would have had 30 I think they, pictures Well, I think that lights. they... They just showed with the movement of it through the sky. And I think it only took those pictures because there's animals. It was motion detected. Yeah. And they're different each time. I don't know. My strongest answer is aliens. Aliens on this one. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. Might have to watch out. All right. Next. Subreddit r slash ghost. This was this year. Oh, it was posted this year. Taken on private land on a wildlife camera in La Junta, Colorado. La Junta. This figure passing is what caused it to take the shot. Sure, if you say so. (laughs) But the owner is troubled by what it could be. He isn't claiming it to be a ghost, but the fencing on the land are high with razor wire. So the prisoners are escaping. (laughs) <laughs> a search of the area and the cameras showed nothing. Yeah, it's someone just walking. I don't know. You know what? Why is every every scary photo or a weird photo, it's always a woman and they're always in a nightgown. Yep. yep That's so it. Photoshop. Yep. Sorry, I don't know to tell you. That's all I got for this one. Anybody make any comments? Let me zoom, zoom in a little bit. Definitely looks like a face with hair and an arm. and Sure. It definitely looks like a person. Yeah. But is your brain just telling you it's a person when it's actually just a blob in the night? Yeah. Um, is there any animal at all? What was this taken off like of? That? What's no. weird is... Probably not an animal. Like animal there's animal, no animal. info... <laughs> On this picture, if it's a trail cam photo, I don't know when they started using them, but there's always. Does it, does it look like info. there's color on the hair and the face? Kind of, because that 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 tells me that it's photoshopped. Because you can't have color on an infrared photo. Period. As far as I it's know, kind of some grayish. Like it looks like it's a different shade. It's like, oh, we want to make people think that this is a woman. Let's give her blonde or brown hair and skin tones. I want to know what's in La Junta, Colorado, that's private, that has giant high wire. With razors? Yeah, besides a prison. You don't need razors on like a high fence property, right? Mm-hmm. Keeps poachers out. I, unless, it, I mean, yeah, the only thing I think is private just, land, but... I don't know why you would want to. You don't need razors, right? This has a lot of questions. Yep. How many more do we have? One more. One more. After this one, one more. Okay. I don't don't have an answer for this one. The the. No, I got it for this one. The music. Every time we switch. Yep. Let's go to the next one. I've uh, seen this one before. This, this one's one fake. Yeah, yeah, but, 2010 yeah. to 2011. It's just funny. Yeah. This is widely considered to be the most like, well-known creepy trail cam image and the most photoshopped one. Yeah. <laughs> Many believe this to be a mythical creature known as a skinwalker. Yeah. It was later discovered that this image was a promotion for a video game called Resistance 3. Oh. I love that they put the trail cam logo in the corner. Yeah, Wild Game Innovations. <laughs> And they they tried getting the date. 
So this one got proven though. Yeah, yeah. That is so, so it's that's cool. it's never been admitted by the company, but there's a like in the game this video game. Exact. These creatures are in the game, <laughs> and when you search up like Resistance Three Trail Cam, this image comes up. Gotcha. And nice. So many people have figured out like. That's is it like? Cool. The, did they figure out like that's this posture, like a, a a posture that they use in the graphics of the video game? Yeah, yeah. Now like the, the, the thing is, look. though, is that going on the Skinwalker thing. Have you guys heard of Skinwalker Ranch? Yeah, I've heard, of, heard of that. I've heard of this stuff. Okay, yes. so it's basically that there's these mythical creatures that are like shapeshifters. I think is what they are. I think it's on TikTok. Yeah, you can kill them with silver bullets. Yeah, yeah. It's like a like a werewolf or vampire kind of kind of situation but in uh is it in uh nevada where, where is skin rock ranch i think that's know? right yeah i think it's in nevada there's this ranch that is has it, had a couple disappearances there? there's no. been a lot of people that have lived there gotcha um but it's like the bermuda triangle of the united states is what people claim it to be is that they don't know if it's aliens they don't know if it's Area supernatural but it's some weird stuff nice. that goes on in this place and there was one story of like a wolf and it's the the owner of the house um at the time that this happened saw this wolf that came up and started like attacking a cow or a deer or something mm-hmm. and then it approached Normal. the house and then uh went away like he started to back off and then attacked um one of the the owner's uh animals i don't know if it was a dog cat or whatever okay so he got out a shotgun shot the deer or shot the wolf wolf, yeah and there was a chunk of flesh that came off and he picked it up and took it to be analyzed and it was what uh, to figure out what it was and how to stop it right i thought he said it was a wolf they said they said it looked like a wolf. Oh. They then it took like it wolf? to go get analyzed, and it the the it walk like meat was dated to be several thousand years old. Nice and um, just according to carbon dating or whatever, however they analyze that it's kind of stuff. The lone I don't wolf. think that works. It's called the the animal that they claim it to be is what's called a dire wolf, and oh, this okay. all happened. I've it's, heard it's of like those. A yeah, that's from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that's what they're claiming it to be, but this all happened on Skinwalker Ranch, and so whenever all of this happened, this and trail that's how Game of you, Thrones came about. <laughs> <laughs> how can you carbon date something that is like literally fresh meat? Which fresh is why meat. they use that is above that's why they use. Why would you no need idea. to date it? They use White Walkers on Game of Thrones because they couldn't use Skinwalkers. Oh, uh, from they're the like, oh, White Walkers, gotcha. Dire wo- You know. Okay, last one. That is the last. That one. is the last one. Uh, I, I wanted to see Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping we'd see a Bigfoot. Oh, watch out! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you probably just scared the snot out of people listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just flinched and their laptop went Somebody flying. just got in a car accident <laughs> because of you. Oh, my gosh. I hope not. We had to get a uh, uh, at least one jump scare on the Halloween podcast. <laughs> Big boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, that was fun. That was good times. Um, okay, so... Trail cameras, make sure you get out there and get them. Check out our website or in store because um, we've got plenty, and we'll go over it with you. Help yeah. you get that, it set up. So yeah, all you definitely. gotta do is walk out and hang it up. We yeah, because I'm right there. I like to go to the store and if you could peek at the settings and how like they mm-hmm. operate, cause sometimes it's easier. Like certain cameras are like a breeze to set up. Yeah, other cameras are like, where do I go? Yeah, what button do I do? It go. Yeah, we've this got menu? people that'll help you. And, so yeah, it's super. We can get it set up for you. Yeah, and um, if, you, if you have questions like, hey, I want to start, I want to set it up as a time lapse food plot kind right. of thing. Yeah, yep. this is what we do. And that way you just take it out and turn it on. Um, Don't forget your batteries in your SD Also, card. if you're using a cell camera, before you leave, make sure you're getting photos transmitted. <laughs> you know, the early make days sure of you're cell getting cameras. signal. Yeah. Like, yeah, I put it out and then I got home and it didn't send me anything. Well, well, you did put it in a spot where there's no signal. Um, <laughs> now you got to go back. Want to thank uh, Quick Coys Decoy Motion and Final Approach for throwing in the items for our 12 weeks of Christmas giveaway. Again, the code word this week for week three is Halloween. Halloween. And um, nobody so, knows how to spell it. Spell it correctly. Nope. <laughs> don't spell yeah. it how I spell it. Uh, yeah, don't <laughs> spell it how I Don't add the extra N. Yeah. Um, so hopefully you're taking part in that. And uh, hopefully you enjoy your Halloween weekend. And 
if you have a chance, make sure you get out there and get in a stand because it is a great weekend to get out there and get after some oh, yeah, white you better tails. be in so, the deer stand um, October 31st. Hopefully you start sending us in some of your stories. So uh, make sure you check us out on all of our social media pages and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button um, on our YouTube channel and uh, share, share it around with everybody. And Did you tell them to give the podcast a rating? Let's do that, you know? I didn't know if you did. Well, it's, I it have not, out. but, you know, if you could give us a rating, that'd be awesome. Um, five stars only. <laughs> um, so do that if you could, and enjoy yeah. the weekend. Be safe. Wear a harness if you're getting up in a ladder stand or hang on. Um, yeah. And uh, until next time. Any questions or comments, email podcast at rogersportinggoods.com. That's right. Be safe, everybody. Peace.